movie directors and famous filmmakers. Hey Isabella, I've been really interested in learning about movie directors lately. Do you know any famous directors? Hi Eric. I'd be happy to help. There are many famous movie directors. Some of them include Steven Spielberg, Quentin Tarantino, and Christopher Nolan. Have you heard of them? Yes, I've heard of those names. What movies has Steven Spielberg directed? Steven Spielberg is a legendary director. He has directed many popular movies, such as Jaws, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Jurassic Park, and Saving Private Ryan. He's known for his ability to tell captivating stories. Wow, those are all great movies. How about Quentin Tarantino? What movies has he directed? Steven Spielberg is a legendary director. He has directed many popular movies, such as Jaws, E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Jurassic Park, and Saving Private Ryan. He's known for his ability to tell captivating stories. I love Pulp Fiction. And Christopher Nolan, what has he directed? Christopher Nolan is famous for his mind-bending and visually stunning films. Some of his well-known movies are Inception, The Dark Knight Trilogy, Interstellar, and Tenet. His films often explore complex themes and challenge the audience's perception of reality. I really enjoyed watching Inception and Interstellar. What makes a good movie director? A good movie director needs to have a clear vision and be able to communicate that vision effectively to the cast and crew. They also need to be skilled in storytelling, have a strong understanding of filmmaking techniques, and be able to bring out the best performances from the actors. That sounds challenging. How do people become movie directors? There are different paths to becoming a movie director. Some people study film at university, while others work their way up through the ranks of the film industry. It often involves starting with smaller projects like short films or commercials and gradually moving on to feature films. That's really interesting. Do you have any advice for someone who wants to become a movie director? My advice would be to learn as much as you can about filmmaking, watch lots of movies, and practice by making your own short films. It's also important to network with others in the film industry and to be persistent, as it can be a competitive field. Thank you, Isabella. This conversation has been very informative. I'm excited to learn more about movie directors and filmmaking. You're welcome, Eric. I'm glad I could help. If you have any more questions or want to discuss movies further, just let me know. Enjoy your journey into the world of film. Thanks, Isabella. Have a great day. You too, Eric. Take care. Coffee breaks in the workplace. Hey Isabella, how's your day going? Hi Eric, my day is going well, thanks for asking. How about yours? I'm doing fine too. I was just thinking about how important coffee breaks are in our workday. What do you think about taking regular coffee breaks? I agree, Eric. Coffee breaks can help improve our productivity and give us a chance to recharge. It's essential to take short breaks during the workday. Exactly. I find that taking a break helps me regain focus and come up with fresh ideas. Do you have a favorite time to take a coffee break? I usually like to take a coffee break mid-morning and another one in the afternoon. It helps me break up the day and stay energized. How about you? I'm the same. I like to take my breaks around 10.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. During the break, I like to step away from my desk, stretch a little, and chat with coworkers. That's a great idea, Eric. Socializing during coffee breaks can also help improve teamwork and create a positive work environment. Plus, it's nice to get to know our colleagues better. Absolutely, Isabella. It's essential to strike a balance between work and socializing. Coffee breaks provide that opportunity. Do you prefer drinking coffee or tea during your breaks? 
I enjoy both, but I usually drink coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon. Sometimes, I switch to herbal tea if I don't want any more caffeine. How about you? I'm a coffee person through and through. I love trying different types of coffee, and I find it helps me stay alert and focused. That's great, Eric. It's crucial to find what works best for us individually. Remember to take breaks even if you don't drink coffee or tea. A short walk or a few minutes of relaxation can be just as beneficial. You're right, Isabella. We should encourage our colleagues to take breaks as well, so everyone can benefit from the improved productivity and overall well-being. Definitely, Eric. Let's make an effort to remind each other and our co-workers to take regular breaks. It's important for maintaining a healthy and productive work environment. Agreed, Isabella. I'm glad we had this conversation. Let's catch up again during our next coffee break. Sounds great, Eric. Have a productive day. Eric and Isabella discussed the importance of taking regular coffee breaks during the workday to improve productivity, recharge, and socialize with coworkers. They shared their preferences for coffee and tea and emphasized the need to encourage colleagues to take breaks, ensuring a healthy and productive work environment. Human Health and Nutrition Habits Hi Isabella, I've been thinking about improving my health and nutrition habits. Do you have any advice? Hello Eric, I'd be happy to help. A balanced diet is essential for good health. It's important to eat a variety of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, and healthy fats. I see. How can I make sure I'm eating a balanced diet? One way is to use the plate method. Imagine your plate is divided into four sections. Fill half of your plate with vegetables, one quarter with lean proteins, and one quarter with whole grains. That sounds easy enough. What about healthy fats? Healthy fats can be found in foods like avocados, nuts, seeds, and olive oil. You can add them to your meals in moderate amounts for flavor and nutrition. I often hear about the importance of drinking water. How much water should I drink each day? Staying hydrated is important for overall health. A general guideline is to drink at least 8 8-ounce glasses of water a day, but it can vary depending on factors like your activity level and the climate you live in. Thanks, Isabella. Do you have any tips for avoiding unhealthy foods? Try to limit processed and sugary foods, as they often have little nutritional value. Instead, focus on whole, unprocessed foods that are rich in vitamins, minerals, and fiber. I've heard that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Is that true? Breakfast can help jumpstart your metabolism and provide energy for the day. It's important to start your day with a balanced meal that includes protein, whole grains, and some fruits or vegetables. What about snacks? Are they bad for my health? Snacks can be part of a healthy diet, as long as you choose nutritious options. Try snacking on fresh fruits, yogurt, or a handful of nuts when you're hungry between meals. I find it challenging to eat healthily when I'm eating out. Do you have any suggestions? When eating out, look for menu options that include plenty of vegetables and lean proteins. Be mindful of portion sizes and try to avoid dishes that are fried or covered in heavy sauces. Thanks for all the helpful advice, Isabella. I feel more prepared to make healthier choices. You're welcome, Eric. Remember that making small, consistent changes can have a big impact on your overall health. Good luck on your journey to better nutrition. Thank you, Isabella. Have a great day. You too, Eric. Take care. Shopping at Pattaya Floating Market Hi Jennifer, do you remember we were discussing our upcoming trip to Thailand? Hi Michael, of course, I do. I'm really excited about it. What's on your mind? I've been reading about the Pattaya Floating Market. 
It seems like a must visit place. Oh, that sounds interesting. What exactly is a floating market? A floating market is a type of traditional market in Thailand. It's essentially a market on water where goods are sold from boats. That sounds fun. What can we expect to find at the Pattaya floating market? From what I've read, we can find a variety of things. It's not just a market, but also a cultural center. There are stalls selling food, fruits, vegetables, spices, and local handicrafts. Plus, there are also traditional Thai houses and cultural performances. I love the idea of buying fresh fruits and vegetables from a boat. And I'm always keen to try local cuisines. Yes, it would be a unique experience. And, we can try the famous Thai street food, like Pad Thai, right from the boats. That sounds delicious. How about clothes or souvenirs? Yes, there are many stalls selling traditional Thai clothes, handmade jewelry, and other local handicrafts. It's a great place to buy souvenirs. That's good to hear. I like collecting unique items from the places I visit. And what about the cultural performances? They have traditional Thai dances and even martial arts performances. We can also take a boat tour to explore the market. That's fascinating. It seems like there's a lot to do and see. How do we get there? It's located in Pattaya City, so we can take a taxi or a bus. Also, it's better to go in the morning when the market is most active. Great. I can't wait to visit the Pattaya floating market. It seems like a wonderful place to experience Thai culture. I agree, Jennifer. This will definitely be a highlight of our trip to Thailand. Thanks for the information, Michael. I'm even more excited about our trip now. You're welcome, Jennifer. It's going to be an adventure. I'm looking forward to it as well. At the hair salon. Hi Jennifer, I've been thinking about going to the hair salon for a haircut. Do you have any recommendations? Hello Michael. Sure, I can help you with that. There's a nice hair salon called Style Studio nearby. I've been there a few times, and they do a great job. Thanks, Jennifer. How do I make an appointment at a hair salon? You can either call them or visit their website to book an appointment. Just let them know your preferred date and time, and they'll schedule it for you. That sounds easy. What should I say when I arrive at the hair salon? When you enter the salon, you can greet the staff by saying, Hello, I have an appointment for a haircut at 3 p.m. My name is Michael. Great. How do I explain what kind of haircut I want? You can either show them a picture of the hairstyle you want or describe it to them. For example, you could say, I'd like a short haircut with layers or I'd like to trim my hair and keep the length. What if I'm not sure what kind of haircut would look good on me? You can ask the hairdresser for their advice. Say something like, I'm not sure what would look best on me. What do you recommend? That's helpful. What about hair treatments or other services? Most hair salons offer a variety of services, such as hair coloring, perms, or deep conditioning treatments. You can ask the hairdresser, what other services do you offer, and they'll explain the options. Thanks, Jennifer. How much should I expect to pay for a haircut? The price can vary depending on the salon and the services you choose. Usually, a basic haircut can cost between $20 and $50. You can check their website or ask them on the phone for the prices. And what about tipping the hairdresser? Is that common? Yes, it's common to tip the hairdresser. A tip of 15 to 20% of the total cost is considered appropriate. I appreciate your help, Jennifer. I'll make an appointment soon. You're welcome, Michael. I'm sure you'll have a great experience. Let me know how it goes. I will, thank you. Have a nice day.
You too, Michael. Take care. The importance of love and respect in a long-lasting and happy relationship. Hi Jennifer, I've been thinking about long-lasting and happy relationships. Do you think love or respect is more important for a successful relationship or marriage? Hello Michael, that's an interesting question. I believe both love and respect are essential in a happy and long-lasting relationship. They are interconnected and contribute to a strong bond between partners. I agree, Jennifer. Love and respect should both be present. But what would you say are the main differences between love and respect? Well, love is a deep emotional connection and affection for your partner. It's the feeling of warmth, care, and attachment that makes you want to be with them. On the other hand, respect is about valuing and honoring your partner's thoughts, feelings, and opinions. It involves treating them with dignity and understanding their needs and boundaries. That's a great explanation. Can you give me some examples of how love and respect might be shown in a relationship? Sure, Michael. Love can be shown through actions like hugging, kissing, holding hands, or saying I love you. It's also important to support your partner, listen to them, and spend quality time together. Respect can be shown by actively listening to your partner, considering their opinions, and not belittling or criticizing them. Thank you, Jennifer. That makes a lot of sense. How do you think we can ensure both love and respect are present in our relationships? To maintain love, it's essential to communicate openly and honestly, share experiences, and express appreciation for each other. For respect, it's important to be empathetic, show kindness, and be willing to compromise when necessary. I see. So, love and respect are like two sides of the same coin, and we need both to maintain a long-lasting and happy relationship, right? Exactly, Michael. Love and respect complement each other, and together, they create a solid foundation for a successful relationship. If one is missing, it can lead to problems and dissatisfaction. Thank you, Jennifer, for sharing your insights. I've learned a lot from this conversation, and I will make sure to prioritize both love and respect in my relationships. You're welcome, Michael. I'm glad I could help. Remember, relationships take time and effort, but with love, respect, and understanding, they can grow stronger and more fulfilling. Thanks, Jennifer. I'll keep that in mind. Have a wonderful day. You too, Michael. Take care. The Art of Gift Giving Hi Jennifer, how are you today? Hello Michael, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good too. I've been thinking about the idea of gifts and souvenirs. They play a crucial role in our relationships and interactions, don't they? Absolutely, Michael. Gifts are a universal way to express love, appreciation, and gratitude. They can strengthen bonds and create lasting memories. I totally agree. Do you think the value of the gift matters? Not necessarily. It's the thought that counts. A gift is a symbol of your feelings for the person. It's more about the effort you put into choosing the right gift rather than its cost. That makes sense. What about souvenirs? How do they fit into this? Souvenirs are a type of gift we buy to remember a special place or event. They can be a reminder of a vacation, a concert, a museum visit, or any other memorable experience. Right. Souvenirs can also be shared with others as gifts, can't they? Indeed. Sharing souvenirs can be a way to share our experiences and memories with our friends and family. It's like bringing a piece of our journey back to them. That's a beautiful way to put it. Do you have any tips on choosing the right gift or souvenir? Well, it's important to consider the person's likes, interests, and needs. For souvenirs, think about what captures the essence of the place or event. 
And remember, it's not just about the object itself, but the meaning it holds. Wonderful advice, Jennifer. I'll keep that in mind. I think this conversation has made me appreciate the art of gift giving even more. I'm glad to hear that, Michael. Giving and receiving gifts can bring so much joy. It's a lovely tradition that transcends cultures and generations. Thank you for sharing your insights, Jennifer. I've enjoyed our conversation. You're welcome, Michael. It was a pleasure discussing this with you. Let's continue to cherish the art of giving and receiving gifts and souvenirs. I couldn't agree more. Take care, Jennifer. You too, Michael. Have a great day. Watching the snow and enjoying winter activities. Hi Isabella, how are you today? Hello Eric, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm good too. I was just looking out my window and watching the snow fall. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Yes, it really is. I love watching the snowflakes gently cover the ground. It makes everything look so peaceful. I agree. Do you have any favorite winter activities that you enjoy when it snows? I do. I love going ice skating at the local rink. It's so much fun to glide on the ice and feel the cold air on my face. How about you, Eric? I enjoy sledding with my friends. We find a big hill and we take turns sliding down it on sleds. It's an exciting and fun way to spend a snowy day. That sounds like a lot of fun. Have you ever tried building a snowman or having a snowball fight? Yes, I have. Building a snowman is a great way to be creative and have fun in the snow. And a snowball fight is always a good time, as long as everyone plays safely. That's true. Another winter activity I enjoy is going for a walk in the snow. Everything looks so different and magical when it's covered in snow. I completely agree. It's also nice to come inside after a walk in the cold and warm up with a cup of hot chocolate. Oh, definitely. I love sitting by the fireplace with a warm drink after spending time outside in the snow. It's such a cozy feeling. Winter can be a beautiful season, with so many fun activities to enjoy. It's important to dress warmly and stay safe, though. Absolutely. Wearing a warm coat, gloves, a hat, and a scarf can help protect us from the cold. And good boots with non-slip soles can help prevent falls on icy surfaces. Great advice, Isabella. It's always better to be prepared for the cold weather. Thank you, Eric. I hope you enjoy the rest of the snowy day and have fun with your winter activities. You too, Isabella. Stay warm and have a great time ice skating. Thanks, Eric. Have fun sledding. Goodbye for now. Working in the construction industry. Hi Jennifer, I heard you worked in the construction industry before. Can you tell me more about your experience? Hi Michael, sure. I worked as a construction worker for a couple of years. It was a challenging but rewarding job. What would you like to know? What kind of tasks did you do as a construction worker? As a construction worker, my tasks varied depending on the project. I did things like mixing cement, carrying materials, and using tools to build structures. I also helped with site preparation and cleanup. That sounds like a lot of physical work. Did you need any special skills or training for the job? Yes, it was physically demanding. Some basic skills are required, like understanding measurements and being able to use tools safely. I also received on-the-job training from experienced workers and supervisors. Was working in construction a safe job? I've heard about accidents happening on construction sites. There can be risks, but safety is a top priority in the construction industry. We had regular safety meetings and were required to wear protective gear, 
such as hard hats, safety glasses, and steel-toed boots. It's important to follow safety rules and procedures to avoid accidents. That's good to know. What did you enjoy most about working in construction? I really enjoyed seeing the progress of a project from start to finish. It was very satisfying to be a part of a team that built something tangible, like a house or a building. What were some of the challenges you faced while working in the construction industry? One challenge was working outdoors in different weather conditions, like extreme heat or cold. It could be difficult at times, but we learned to adapt. Another challenge was the physical demands of the job, but it also helped me stay in good shape. Did you have any memorable experiences during your time in the construction industry? I remember working on a community center project. It was a large building that took several months to complete. When it was finished, the local community was very grateful, and we felt a sense of pride in our work. That was a very rewarding experience. That sounds wonderful. Thank you for sharing your experience with me, Jennifer. I've learned a lot about the construction industry today. You're welcome, Michael. I'm glad I could help. If you have any more questions or need advice, feel free to ask. I appreciate it, Jennifer. Have a great day. You too, Michael. Take care. The Carnival of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil Hi Mary, how are you doing today? Hi James, I'm doing well. How about you? I'm great, thank you. I was reading about the carnival in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Do you know anything about it? Yes, I've heard about it. It's one of the biggest and most famous carnivals in the world. Really? What makes it so special? It's known for its large-scale parades filled with vibrant costumes, rhythmic music, and passionate dancing. People from all over the world come to participate and watch. That sounds amazing. Can you tell me more about the parades? Sure. The parades are organized by Samba schools, which are community groups from different neighborhoods. Each school prepares a theme and presents it through their floats, costumes, and music. I see. And what's Samba? Samba is a Brazilian dance and music genre. It's very energetic and has a fast rhythm. It's at the heart of the Rio Carnival. So, it's a lot about dancing and music then? Absolutely. But it's not just about that. The carnival is a cultural expression. It reflects Brazil's history, diversity, and spirit. That's fascinating. I've also heard that the costumes are quite spectacular. Yes, they are. The costumes are usually colorful and elaborate. They often feature feathers, sequins, and other shiny elements. Some dancers wear large headdresses and wings. It must be a joy to watch. How long does the carnival last? It usually lasts for about a week, and it takes place in February or early March. During this time, there are parties, concerts, and street parades all over the city. I'd love to see it one day. Do you have any tips for someone who wants to go? Sure. It's a good idea to book your accommodations and tickets in advance as it gets quite crowded. And be ready to enjoy a lot of dancing and music. Thanks for all the information, Mary. The Rio Carnival sounds like a unique experience. You're welcome, James. It certainly is. Let me know if you have any more questions. Will do, Mary. Thanks again. Take care. You too, James. Enjoy your day. My last day at school. Hi Jennifer, do you know what today is? Hello Michael, let me guess. Is it your birthday? No, it's not my birthday. Today is my last day at school. 
Oh, I see. How do you feel about that? I have mixed feelings. I'm excited about what's next, but I'm also sad to leave my friends and teachers. That's understandable. Can you tell me about your favorite moments at school? Sure, there are so many. I loved our school trips, especially the one to the science museum. I also enjoyed the annual school play. That sounds like fun. What did you like about the school trips and the play? I loved learning new things in a fun way. The trips made learning feel like an adventure. And the play taught me a lot about teamwork and creativity. What will you miss the most about school? I think I'll miss my friends the most. We've shared so many experiences and memories together. Friends are indeed a special part of school life. What's your plan after school? I'm planning to go to college. I want to study computer science. That's great. What made you interested in computer science? I've always been fascinated by technology. I also took a computer science class in school and really enjoyed it. That's a good reason. How do you plan to keep in touch with your friends after school? We plan to meet up regularly. We also have a group chat where we can stay connected and share updates. That's a good plan. Is there anything you would have done differently at school? Looking back, I would have probably participated more in sports. I focused a lot on academics, but I now realize that sports are also important for a balanced life. That's a good reflection. Do you have any advice for someone who is just starting school? Yes, I would tell them to enjoy every moment and to try different things academics, sports, arts. School is not just about grades, it's also about making friends and discovering what you love. That's wonderful advice, Michael. I wish you all the best for your future. Thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate your good wishes. I'm looking forward to the next chapter of my life. I'm sure you'll do great, Michael. Keep in touch and take care. Thanks, Jennifer. I will. You take care too. Concepts of love and pride. Hi Michael, how are you today? Hello Jennifer, I'm well, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. I've been thinking about two concepts lately, love and pride. Do you have any thoughts about them? That's an interesting topic, Jennifer. Well, love and pride are both powerful emotions but they serve different purposes. Love is usually about affection and care, while pride is about self-respect and satisfaction in achievements. Could you elaborate more on love? Of course. Love is a deep affection for someone. It's a feeling of strong or constant affection for a person. It can also describe a great interest and pleasure in something. I see. So, it's not just about romantic relationships? Exactly. You can love your family, your friends, and even activities like reading or playing sports. It's about feeling warm, caring, and attached to someone or something. That makes sense. What about pride? Pride is a feeling of satisfaction derived from one's own achievements or from qualities or possessions that are widely admired. It's about recognizing your own value and feeling good about who you are and what you've done. But isn't pride sometimes seen as a negative thing? Yes, that's true. When someone is excessively proud, it can be seen as arrogance. This is often referred to as excessive pride or false pride. It's important to have a healthy level of pride, one that reflects confidence without dismissing others. How can we balance love and pride in our lives? That's a good question. It's important to have both. Love allows us to connect deeply with others, and pride gives us a sense of self-worth. However, balance is key. We should avoid letting pride prevent us from expressing love, 
and we shouldn't let our love for others overshadow our self-respect. That's a thoughtful perspective, Michael. I appreciate your insights. I'm glad I could help, Jennifer. These are complex emotions and they can be difficult to navigate. But with thoughtfulness and balance, we can make them work in our favor. I completely agree. Thanks for this enlightening conversation, Michael. You're welcome, Jennifer. It's always a pleasure to have deep discussions with you. If you have any more thoughts or questions, feel free to share. I surely will, Michael. Have a wonderful day. You too, Jennifer. Take care. The Running of the Bulls Festival in Spain Hello Mary, I've heard you went to Spain last summer. Did you by any chance attend the Running of the Bulls Festival? Hi James, yes, I did. It's a unique and exciting event that happens in the city of Pamplona every year. That's interesting. Can you tell me more about the festival? What exactly happens there? Sure, I'd love to. The festival is called San Fermin, and the running of the bulls is just one part of it. It's an event where people run in front of a group of bulls that have been let loose on a course of a sectioned-off subset of the town streets. That sounds dangerous. Why do people do it? It's a tradition that dates back to the 14th century. Initially, it was a practical thing, the bulls had to be moved from the city outskirts to the bullring where they would be fought in the afternoon. Youngsters would jump among them to show off their bravado. Oh, I see. So, it turned into a festival over time. What else happens during the festival? Apart from the bull runs, there are many other activities like parades, fireworks, and traditional sports. It's a week-long festival, and the whole city is decorated with red and white, which are the colors of the event. That sounds like quite a spectacle. But, aren't there any safety concerns during the running of the bulls? Absolutely, it can be very dangerous, and there have been injuries and even deaths in the past. Before the event starts, there are safety instructions given, and you must be over 18 to participate. It's also advised not to participate if you have been drinking. That makes sense. It's important to be careful. Did you participate in the running? No, I didn't. I watched from a safe distance. It was thrilling enough just to be a spectator. I can imagine. It must have been an unforgettable experience. Is there anything else you'd like to share about the festival? Just that it's a huge part of the local culture. The people of Pamplona take great pride in hosting the San Fermin Festival. While the running of the bulls might be the most famous event, the entire festival is a celebration of the city's heritage. It sounds incredible, Mary. I'd love to see it for myself someday. Thanks for sharing your experience. You're welcome, James. If you ever decide to go, I'm sure you'll have a great time. Just remember to stay safe. Finding our life's purpose. Hi Jennifer, how are you today? Hello Michael, I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. I've been thinking a lot about life recently, specifically about finding a purpose in life. Do you have any thoughts on this? That's a deep question, Michael. Everyone has different beliefs about life's purpose. Some people find purpose in their work, while others find it in their relationships or personal growth. Yes, I agree. I think it's essential to find something that gives our life meaning. But how does one find this purpose? Well, it's a personal journey for everyone. It starts with understanding yourself better. What are your passions? What are your strengths? What do you value most in life? That makes sense. I've always been passionate about music and art. But can these passions be considered a life purpose? Absolutely. 
If you can use your passion to make a positive impact on others or to find personal fulfillment, then it could indeed be your life's purpose. I see. But how can I make sure that I'm heading in the right direction? It's important to align your actions with your values and passions. You should also set goals that can guide you towards your purpose. Remember, it's okay to make adjustments along the way. That's helpful, Jennifer. What if I encounter obstacles or challenges? It's natural to face challenges in life, Michael. They help us grow and learn. It's important to stay resilient and keep pursuing your purpose, even when things get tough. You're right, Jennifer. I believe that challenges make us stronger. What else can I do to find my life's purpose? Keep exploring, Michael. Try new things, meet new people, and step outside of your comfort zone. It's also important to practice gratitude and appreciate the journey. Thank you, Jennifer. You've given me a lot to think about. You're welcome, Michael. Remember, finding your purpose is a personal journey, and it's okay to take your time. I'm here if you ever want to talk more about it. I appreciate that, Jennifer. I'll keep everything you've said in mind. Have a great day. You too, Michael. Take care. An Overview of the Burning Man Festival Hi Mary, have you ever heard about the Burning Man Festival in the United States? Hello James, I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. Can you tell me more? Of course. Burning Man is an annual event that takes place in the Black Rock Desert of Nevada. It usually happens at the end of August and beginning of September. What happens at this event? Well, it's a very unique festival that focuses on community, art, self-expression, and self-reliance. People from all over the world come to create a temporary city in the desert. A city in the desert? That sounds interesting. Yes, it's known as Black Rock City. The participants, or burners, build installations and art structures. The festival is named after the ritual burning of a large wooden sculpture of a man. Oh, so that's why it's called Burning Man. What else can you do at the festival? There are many activities you can participate in. There are music performances, workshops, and various events. But what's really special is that everything is created by the participants themselves. So, it's a community-driven event? Exactly. There's no separation between performers and audience. Everyone contributes in their own way to the experience. It's also guided by a set of principles, like radical inclusion and gifting. Gifting? What does that mean? It means that burners are encouraged to give gifts to each other. These gifts can be anything from a handmade item, a song, a performance, or even help with a task. The idea is to promote a sense of community and cooperation. That's a beautiful concept. Is there anything else I should know? One more thing, it's a leave no trace event, meaning everyone is responsible for cleaning up and leaving the desert exactly as they found it. It sounds like an amazing experience. Thank you for telling me about it, James. You're welcome, Mary. If you ever get the chance, I recommend going. It's truly a unique experience. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks again, James. No problem, Mary. If you have any more questions in the future, feel free to ask. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too, James. Take care.